is a popular topic, acne. And uh, just for a, a preview, um, I, I know what it's like to have acne because when I was 15, I had a terrible cystic acne. And uh, anybody who tells you that acne is really easy to treat, even dermatologists, I think, would be lying because I'm not going to tell you it's the easiest. Okay? Um, it's one of the most challenging things, or can be one of the most challenging things to treat because it has so many different facets. All right? So let's just kind of look tonight. We have, uh, when we talk about acne, we have blackheads or comedones. Okay? Um, we have whiteheads. We have cystic acne. We have what are called sebaceous cysts, which aren't really acne. Uh, this is when a gland is completely backed up or clogged up. We see this a lot in the, uh, older adults. We have what are called boils. Remember in the Old Testament, New Testament, they read about people with boils. Um, I'll talk about those a bit. And then we also have a um, condition called folliculitis. And I want to put all of these up so that you kind of understand um, what we're really looking at at these different types of presentation when we kind of just put the whole name at me. Okay? A lot of us are familiar with blackheads. Those are the funds that, ones that are squeeze and the little squiggler comes out and it's black and it's because this sebaceous gland, the oil gland, has been blocked up. And so that blocking of the pore actually creates then a little... Uh, place for then this blackhead to form. A lot of, of time it will form along the hair follicle, but most young people will notice blackheads start to form on their nose in their teen, early teen years, so the pubescent, prepubescent age. Okay? And that's just a blocking of that canal or that duct, that sebaceous duct. So right down here, there's this little gland, an oil gland that secretes sebum or oil into the, that follicle. And a lot of times blackheads begin on the nose. Okay. Now, why is it that a lot of physicians caution people about squeezing acne on the nose and in that facial area? Do you remember? You can create scarring, isn't that the story? Okay, so one of the theories is because it creates scarring. The other theory that I really want to talk about this evening is the nasium, or the nose, basically has... Let's look right here, just a moment. Basically, around the nose area, we have a region of blood vessels that have collateral circulation that goes back up into the brain. So this little triangle actually represents a potential pathogenic area of infection or concomitant circulation that could then lead to infection in the brain. Okay, So that's why a lot of times when we look at bloody noses for example or when we see the when the eye actually burst the blood vessel on the inside of the eye and you'll see that little hematoma in the, the inside of the eye have any of you ever seen that when a blood vessel bursts mm -hmm. and that blood vessel in the eye just makes the eye look really broken and red the reason that we looked at this first of all this has collateral circulation this is a different topic but I'll just mention it now as we're talking about blood vessels in the face is that in order to get blood to this area, the blood vessel, if we actually turn to the side this way, that blood vessel, in order to reach the eye, has to be able to come all the way through from in the neck, either by the deep or the carotid artery or the vertebral artery, which becomes the basilar artery, and then they join that basilar artery right up here around the pituitary gland. Then from there, the optic artery comes forward and then gives the blood supply into the eye. If that same bleed were to happen one and a half inches back, what would we call that? Stroke. A stroke. Okay. So when you start to see your spouse getting this little bleed in the eye, that's a big concern. Don't just think, oh yeah, he he was working hard and he bent over and stood up and he felt a little pop in his eye and now he has this blood or this bleed in the white area of his eye. 
If that was just that far back, we call that a stroke. And the frontal lobes of the brain are very, very important for movement, thought, coordination of thought, and emotion. All right? So there is a lot of information happening there. But this also has a collateral circulation that goes back up in. And that's why we even talk about then with dental infections. Dental infections also play into this. Think about this. If you've had a root canal tooth or as a child, you had one of these two buck teeth knocked out, right? Before they had an opportunity to mature to your whole facial skeletal structure. Now you've got an infection in here. That infection can cause everything from migraineous episodes to head pressure to sinus pressure, sinus infections, change in vision. Um, and there's a myriad or a host of things that will end up coming from that. So be aware, infection in this area of the face can create a lot of problems in the brain. Okay? okay. You would have bought at the bidding auction today with that kind of a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I bought a bottle. Good. Okay. So that's the blackhead, then the little whiteheads form, and that's now we're actually looking at not just the blockage, but now we're starting to look at infection. The white represents forest pus, right? You've seen when you have a festered blister, an infection, you'll get this little white presentation in whiteheads, and cystic acne are more of a representation of an infection. Okay? So this is when we have the the gland is now blocked. So, or the, where the gland is exiting, we have then this spacious gland, and now there's bacteria in here, and this will head over and actually block this, and now we end up with a whitehead, okay? And the body's pushing the immune system to try to take care of this little bacterial infection. Now, the interesting thing that happens is, if this continues to swell, it will actually break the barrier of the base and now we have a cyst that's formed, and that's what we see with the case of a cystic acne. So a, a more aggressive infection, and the body's trying to wall that off, and now it's actually bursting that hair follicle or that, that uh, specific skin structure, and now it bursts into and below the epidermis into the dermal, dermal layers, okay? And those are really deep, and those... Again, they're the ones that most commonly will cause, cause scarring because it's actually going all the way down into the germal layer. Right. Now, boils are often a staph infection that occur anywhere on the body and they'll just come up randomly. I've seen a lot of adults with boils uh, in the back, along the hip area, this area, this area. This would be the shoulder blade, the shoulder blade, shoulders come off like this. That does not look appropriate. That looks more like it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the shoulders like this, the spine like this, then you have these two little dimples down here. Uh, when we look at this, I hope that didn't get <laughs> Not much. <laughs> not much. <laughs> do, you, do you remember, i got to say this, do you remember on, uh, oh, that funny show where the, the guy is, he comes on vacation with his psychologist, psychiatrist, he wasn't invited. What about Bob? What about Bob? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the psychiatrist goes back and checks on him in the wacky house. And he's telling me, he's got all these people laughing. Anyway, he, he's talking about the pictures. It, it just, anyway, it made me think of that. <laughs> You'll have to watch it because that was one of those. <laughs> Anyway, funny. Um, boils, though, <laughs> I've seen boils on the back. I've seen them on the shoulders. I've seen a lot of cases of boils around the groin area and the, the bottom. And they are terrible, deep staph infections that are so painful, people cannot even sit on them. Many times they'll be lanced, but the big problem that I've found with a lot of people that have boils is they already have skin integrity problems and they don't heal well. I've actually seen um, boils in several cases where they had to be lanced, but then for months afterwards they wouldn't heal. And we had to treat a, a terrible staph infection and use laser light to actually get the connective tissue, the basal layer underneath to heal so it would actually grow from the inside out. 
Um, one case, a fellow came to us and his had been lanced, and then you could actually see under his skin where it had been lanced, you could see this open wound like this, and underneath you could see the different muscle fibers, and it looked like, uh, I don't know, like deer meat. It was really interesting. Okay. Anyway, serious condition. Let's get him taken care of. Don't just believe it. All right. Thank you. So that's that case. Folliculitis. How many of you have seen folliculitis, especially on the thighs? Very common to get folliculitis on the thighs, um, on the backs of the hands. And what we're looking for is that hair follicle again. Almost looks like a whitehead, but it's it's covering each of the hair follicles, and you'll actually see it, it can be itchy at times, but most of the time with folliculitis, I see it associated with a true food sensitivity. And oftentimes it is a precursor to the contact, or excuse me, not the contact, but the dermatitis herpetiform. Okay, so celiac type of a presentation. Um, with on the on the extremities, but especially on the thighs, we'll see that a lot. So, with feel, what I saw of folliculitis was from going in a hot tub with bacteria, yeah. and and I think it was on our back and our stomach. One of my kids got it. Uh -huh. And what about will it develop into like say it's on the face if it's folliculitis? Would it develop into where that what I called acne looks more like a patch of rash, not individual Papules. pimples? Okay. So the question right now how is how do you know the difference? How do you know what you're looking at? Yeah. So folliculitis true is where you'll just see each of the hair follicles. So it looks like little white heads at each hair uh, follicle, and they'll be red. A lot of times they'll just scratch off the white head really easily, but then it'll remain red. And oftentimes it will kind of ooze a little serous fluid. Okay. Oftentimes we'll find that when it's chronic. You now, when it's an acute case, like you're describing, we may be looking at some type of a, an infection, like you're describing from a hot tub. Now, remember when you see those types of infections, many water and that kind of a hot water or shower type of an experience. You know, guys at the shower room or whatever. They end up with some type of a fungal infection. So that's where you pick up the ringworms, the different types of jock itch, and the foot, athlete's foot presentation. So when you start to see things that are kind of patchy, think of fungal infections. Okay? A lot of times when you see patches, it's just kind of in a patch and it kind of grows outward from the center. You want to think of some type of fungal infection. In little children, there's actually a viral infection that's called the hen and chick presentation where the virus will begin in a certain area and then it'll kind of go out from there as, as little dots or petechiae that will start to migrate outward and that can be viral. Okay, but When you see it very kind of demarcated, think fungal first. All right, but It's just the way that they like to grow. Remember when we drew a couple of weeks ago the little rhizome or the roots that go underneath the ground mm -hmm. and they spread? For those of you who've lived in the Northwest, if people like to go and look for different type of morel mushrooms and different mushrooms that are seasonal, you can keep going to the same place. Why? Because that's where they grow, because the rhizome or the root is underneath, and they'll just continue to pop up in a certain prime season. You go and harvest them, and then you have the mushrooms that you can eat. Okay? So that's what they're looking for. Um, similarly, then, on the body, different areas like diaper rashes, you'll see that well demarcated line of a yeast or a fungal infection around baby's bottom. It's like, gosh, I cleaned there really well. How come this continues to burn all the way out to those edges? Well, that's a fungal margin. It's not usually something of the white that you're using. Okay, So just kind of think that way. What about the patches on your arms? Great question. So the other question then is, what about the patches that you see on the backs of the triceps? Okay. Very, very common. It's a folliculitis type of a presentation. We see that most common in this area as a gallbladder congestion. Okay? So when you see that, the little kind of a pimply looking presentation on the backs of the arms, we're thinking of gallbladder. And if you can heal the gallbladder, usually you can clear that up. You see it a lot in um, young people when they start to get hormonal in their system, when they start to 
um, get to be puberty age and you'll start to see those little bumps on the backs of the triceps hallmark we see that consistently gallbladder okay